And a very good Thursday morning to you. This is Chris Reardon's United Kingdom talk. It's just gone uh, 11 o'clock on September, Thursday, September the 16th. Listen to my chiming clock. Oh, it's all working perfectly. I have decided to move my chiming clock here into the Mirable studio to add to the ambience of the whole show. I think it's quite a nice touch, don't you? A little little golden clock sitting behind me. Welcome along. Uh, as I say, if you're wondering whether you're listening to live or recorded, well, have a look at your clock. If it's now Thursday, September the 16th, 2010, and it's just gone 11 o'clock in the morning UK time, then you are with us live. A very, very good morning to you, OK? On this particular show, you can watch or listen. Entirely up to you. Just go to unitedkingdomradio.co.uk and click either the listen button or the watch button. Now, uh, regular uh, viewers and listeners will notice that the voice is not quite here this morning, is it, eh? <clears throat> you know, I had a cold uh, for a few days at the weekend, and it's kind of left me with a little bit of a cough. Uh, and this morning with a dodgy voice, although probably also due to me shouting me head off at, uh, at the karaoke night in Belushi's London Bridge or Borough last night. We had another, another busy karaoke night. Everything seems to have suddenly got busier, bar one place, uh, on a specific night, which I shall not mention because I'll get told off then, you see. Told off, please, me! Told off! I don't think so, dear! We don't get told off, thank you. Now, everything's sort of doing quite well at the moment, except one particular place. And um, last night, once again, Belushi's in London Bridge Borough. A highly amusing evening. I do like it. It does amuse me when young ladies... I mean, they call themselves young ladies, honestly. You want to see them tanked up to the eyeball. It was quite amusing last night. So one girl, she was so drunk, and she had this glass of wine. And I don't know what it is. But once girls are a bit bit drunk, they do become a complete and utter pain. They're up to you every five minutes. When's my song coming on? Flutter, flutter with the eyelashes, like it's going to make a blind bit of difference to me, which is not, dear. But they get drunk and they just can't handle it. And this girl, last night, she stepped onto the stage and went flying across... Uh, with a drink going, oh, it did amuse me, with a drink going all over the place. I do enjoy that. And at another point, I don't know what happened to some boy, but um, he was absolutely, he had to be carried out in the end. <clears throat> I don't think he had just drunk. I can't believe drink would do that. He's obviously doing something very stupid uh, with his friends in the toilet or whatever, or out the back or something like that. It can't have been drink. I mean, how why do people do these things, anyway? Uh, if you want to join in live and you are with us live, then you can do so. We have Skype. Uh, Skype, you... <laughs> oh, you know what? I've forgotten, don't you? There we are. Hit the record button. Do you know what? Even Wayne this morning, Wayne this morning reminded me at about a minute to 11 to hit the record button. And I said, thank you. I still didn't do it. How many months has this been going on, not hitting that record button? Never mind. Um, if you are with us live, you can join in by Skype. My Skype username is all one word. It's United Kingdom Radio. OK, United Kingdom Radio is my Skype username. You can also join in by telephone. It's a local London number. The number is 020 3287 1488. 020 Three. Oh dear me, just a minute, I've just realised something else. There we are. Sorry. Oh, two. <laughs> Those of you listening on the audio stream will have noticed there were two shows playing out then, weren't there? Sorry, I've just stopped the recording. Sorry, thank you. Oh, we're not going to get this right. I think what it is, I'm excited today because the, the Pope has arrived, boys and girls. Half an hour ago, an Alitalia plane dropped out of the sky and landed at Glasgow. In oh, I've got Scottish music. Just a minute. Scottish music. Scotland. Scotland. Just a minute. Just a minute. <coughs> Scotland. Where are we? There we are. <coughs> <coughs> oh, dear me. Are we going to make it today? I don't know. Well, no. <coughs> Yes, boys and girls, an Alitalia plane dropped out of the air in Scotland above Glasgow... Or was it Edinburgh? No, I think... 
I don't know now. I think it was Glasgow International Airport, and it landed, and the Pope has arrived, boys and girls. He is here just a few minutes ago before we came on air. And in celebration of this, I am today wearing my red papal shirt. Yes. Whether he's going to make an appearance on the show today, I don't know. I think he's holding mass somewhere. And I've got the video recording, and I shall be watching that later. I do have my red papal shirt on today. There are, apparently, there are other things that you can buy, such as hooded tops on with the Pope rocks, and things like that. Little, little pens and, and souvenirs. Key rings, probably, boys and girls. I expect there are key rings as well. Perhaps I could get a little statue of Benny and put it behind me on the shelf there. Benny the Pope. Oh, he can shorten that. If he's a modern pope, we can shorten it. Benny the Pope. Which is quite nice. Anyway, he's very, very busy. Whether he pops into the studio in the next 55 minutes or so, I don't know. Fingers crossed, OK? A couple of messages coming in. Uh, good morning to Vicky. Good morning, Chris. I'm listening as I get ready for work. Have a great day. Something odd about the audio stream. I can hear you in a recording of Suko at the same time. Yes, that should have stopped now. Sorry about that. Very, very foolishly, I forgot to uh, stop the, um, uh, the uh, recorded show playing. There's so much to remember before you start a show. There really is. Um, and Vicky says, thanks for fixing the audio stream. Is the Pope going to visit Royal Berkshire? I don't know. I don't know. I sent a letter. Whether he got it or not, I don't know. You know, I, 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 I'm not sure whether he will be coming here to the Mirable studio. Of course, I will make tea and everything like that. All right. So there we are. Um, there we are. Mike, uh, Mike informs us as well. <coughs> we made a, a little mistake on the audio stream today. Thank you, Mike. And um, Wayne says, I had Esmond Laurie come. What's Esmond Laurie? Wayne says, I had Esmond Laurie come round, so couldn't remind you on time. What's Esmond? L I don't know what Esmond Laurie is. Are you, are you talking in riddles? Please don't talk in riddles. We don't do riddles, please. And uh, Millie's with us as well this morning in Minnesota. Good morning, Millie. Millie in Minnesota. Now, if you're watching a recording or listening to a recording, you can still join in the show by email, as indeed lots of people have done. And we're going to read the emails out in a second. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, just quickly on the Pope's visit, because I don't like to get all political and all that, I find myself in a very difficult position, really. Um, on the, oh, Vicky says, hooded tops with the Pope rocks on it. That would be a chavy Pope hoodie. Wouldn't it be great if we had groups of chavs walking around with the Pope rock? Quite liking the idea of that. I wonder if he would. I find myself in a rather difficult position. On the one hand, I was brought up a Catholic. OK? Um, I would not say I am a person who sticks to the rules. Certainly not. If you're a regular viewer or listener to the show, you probably know me quite well. You don't know everything about me, but probably quite a lot. So, I find it very difficult when I go on Facebook and watch various news items about large groups of people who are going to wherever the Pope is to try and create disruption on some of the things he's said. Such as various, very, very serious issues like the child's abu uh, child abuse cases that it appears were covered up. The Catholic Church condoning the use of condoms. Which, as we know, all of us know, is a good way to try and stop the, the increase and the amount of people getting HIV and other things. Of course, the Pope would say that 
any sort of sexual stuff should not be outside of marriage. But we're talking about the real world here. And there are various other things. Now, I'm just having a look on the Facebook now. And I personally find it very hurtful that some of the people I would class as good friends, very good friends, have put certain things on their status this morning. One of which says, and I quote, the Nazi Pope has come to town. A holy man that was in an army that killed six million innocent people. A holy man that covers the abuse of hundreds of children. A holy man that has views about gays and condoms, cell stem, stem cell research that influences people that effectively sends them to their deaths. You still wear your SS uniform. You're not welcome here. I know friends that will remain friends with me. That have actually gone on trains, taken to their cars and gone to wherever he is to celebrate mass. I see some of the things they've written. And I feel some of them are true. And yet I am a Catholic and he is the leader. Could it be fair to say that if you are a member of any sort of organisation, shall we say, that would include a religion or, or a workplace or group of friends. You don't necessarily have to like what the leader is saying or even perhaps like the leader to still be a member. Every time I see a little message on the Facebook or something like that, you're not welcome here, the Pope is not welcome, and all this, it, it, it hurts. It does hurt. And I find myself having trouble, real trouble, with, with all this going along, and at the same time, actually keeping my mouth shut until now. One of my dear friends who I met uh, with on Sunday, someone I work with. I'm actually going to visit my sister next Sunday. And I said, oh, I won't be away next week. She said, are you going to see the Pope? I said, well, I might be. She said, well, I might see you there. I said, are you going as well? No, I'm on the anti-Pope rally. And together we joked. I said, oh, well, that's fantastic. Well, while I'm at Mass and you're doing your stuff what's against what's going on, um, it should finish by about eight o'clock. Why don't we meet up for a pizza afterwards? And we joked happily together. Yeah, that's a good idea. But there's, there's an example there of two people with differing views, okay, who can still come together afterwards. And that is the case of, I think, what will happen this time. I think many, many people feel they are in the same position as me. Let's be honest, I don't think this is a very popular Pope. However, he is the leader. We are, I suppose, I, I suppose, supposed to do exactly as I say, as he says, rather. I'll do that again. We are, I suppose, supposed to do exactly as he says. 
But how many people who are Catholics do, actually do, exactly as he said? I would imagine very, very few. So there's my thoughts on that. I've not gone by the book by far. I've gone completely away from the book at some points. But on the occasions where I've gone to church, there's no one at the church at the front door saying, oh, sorry, you can't come in. You haven't gone by the book. No one has chucked me out. Have they? So I just wanted to share that with you there. And I wondered if there was anyone else in a similar situation with me who, who actually sees these messages from various people, possibly friends, perhaps family members. And you look at the messages and you think, oh, what do I do? That's where I am. What do I do? I think, what do I do? I think there were other times in the past where groups of people broke into churches, not broke into churches, but went into churches in the middle of masses, services, if you will, and disrupted them to put their point across. And I think that's not good because apart from interrupting the service and getting your point across to whoever's taking the service, what about all the people that are in the church who are there for a reason? Don't they deserve to be able to practice their religion quietly as they always have done without being interfered with or interrupted with? One of the gay rights groups, years ago, outrage. Interrupted the service, I believe, at Westminster Cathedral, I think it was. To put a point across. And I just think that's a step too far. Lots of people in there, many of them elderly. Just want to go to Mass. If you've got a problem, go to the person concerned. Don't walk in to hundreds and hundreds of people and spoil their day. You don't get a load of priests, bishops, cardinals, the Pope, walking into a gay pub and interrupting what's going on in there, do you? Has that ever happened? No. But going back to this Pope's visit, I think it's a wonderful thing. I really do. Some of the things he's done are perhaps, yeah, uh, questionable. But as I say, you don't have to be a member of, a, a member of the religion, and also at the same time like the leader. Do you? Any thoughts on that? Please feel free to send them in. Perhaps on the email, that one, because that's a little bit more... Um, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, complicated. Email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Hello to Millie in Minnesota, who's on the line now. Hello, Millie. Good morning, how are you? Morning, Millie. I'm not too well at all, darling, at the moment, love. I've still got this cough and cold, and it's not uh, it's not shifting at the moment. Uh-oh, you you do sound awful. Yeah, yeah, I know. The voice the voice is here. But I'm still here, Millie. You, you sound see? terrible. I say I'm going to be somewhere, and I am here, Millie. Well, get yes, on with it, are. then. What are you going to say, dear? Well, um, 
you probably got the email that I sent you yes. late Tuesday night. Yes, Millie's one of those people who sends an email and then two days later asks whether you've got it or not. It's here in front of me waiting to be read out. Okay. <laughs> um, it's sure to scare things up, I'll tell you that much right now. Right. Right. Uh, because I expressed a pretty strong opinion in there. Well, we haven't got to it yet. If you wait yeah. for me to get to it, a little bit of patience, that's all we need. Sure, no problem. I will wait. Um, I did get, get a bit of good news um, regarding my uncle's condition. Um, Hang on a minute, minute, minute. His we're, red cell count we're, 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 we're doing the poke whoa, at the moment. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you having trouble with your sound? Okay. Yeah, I am. Hang on. Actually, you know what? Ring me back. Okay, well, let me go on to a few of these emails today, if you're all right there, Millie, all right? Yeah, no problem. Okay, have a good day. Oh, yeah, I'll trouble with her sound there, Millie in Minnesota. Um, oh, uh, who's this? Oh, good morning, Mikey. Good morning, Miss Christine Reardon. What does it mean, Christine Reardon? Why, why am I being referred to in a woman's name? Does it do I look like the sort of person that wears women's clothes? If you don't mind, Mikey Holt, could you please start the show again? I was on the bus from college. No, we can't start the show again. What a cheek. What do you think this is? Haven't you got rewind on your computer or something like that? Uh, Mikey says the Pope is a wrinkly. Well, I'm glad you haven't referred to me as that yet. I'm, qu <laughs> I'm quite glad you haven't referred to me as a wrinkly yet. Now, um, a letter has come in, boys and girls. A little letter has come in. And I know this has come from uh, the lovely Kath, who's in Wales. <coughs> You can always send a postal... Oh, I've just found my nail clippers. I wondered where they were. Would you like to cut my, me to cut my nails live on air today? Eh? Like me to clip away at my nails? Perhaps you'd like me to send you the nail clippings in an envelope. You might be able to sell them on eBay, you think? Eh? I wonder how much money Shirley Bassey would get for her nails sort of cut and sold on eBay. Would she get a lot of money? Shirley Bassey. Do you think she'd make a good Pope, wouldn't she? Shirley Bassey. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. The feathers, the diamond rings, the tiara. She would sing hymns like you've never heard them before. Even Mikey Holt would want to go and hear them, I reckon. Anyway, yeah, you can always um, send in a, uh, a letter by post, actually, OK? I will give you the address uh, to do that just in case anyone wants to do it. I know some people like to write a letter, then send an email or use Skype or something like that. Anyway, um, lovely photo here of the... Uh, actually, it's, it's a winter photo. It was a bit strange to send a winter photo in um, in uh, Kath. I would have said, my darling, isn't it? At the end of summer. Hi, Chris. Hope all is well with you. Well, apart from my cold, yes. And it's not man flu. Man flu is when these blokes have colds and they make them out to be much worse than they really are. Although, you know, I'm not making this out to be terrible and, and awful, OK? <clears throat> Kath says, lucky you going to Norfolk Island again. Yes, in January I shall be jetting off on British Airways business class to Australia. Once again, I am looking forward to that. And then flying from there over to Norfolk Island. Um, lucky you going to Norfolk Island again for your holiday and in bitterly cold January as well. Yeah, I've, I hate this cold. In fact, you know what? I, th I think January is actually warmer now than February. Do you think that? I find February a very cold month. Will you be making some recordings again for your show? Probably, yes. I expect so. I hope so. Last time they were really well made and presented. You've got a talent. Oh, it's very kind of you to say so, dear. Thank you, Kath. I talent as much as I can. I shall be recording probably a couple of shows while I'm actually on the island, yes. I wouldn't dismiss 
Audi altogether if I were you, Chris. Now, that's a, a particular supermarket that I dislike. I don't, don't like Audi. She says, keep an eye open there for their twice weekly specials. If you are unable to call in for their um, flyers, you can look them up on the Internet. Special offers? What are these special offers? I mean, let me have a look now, actually, while you're there. Audi. Audi SPE special offers. Let's have a look at this. Audi homepage, special buys. That's it, special buys, it must be. Ooh, winter cycling jacket, $14.99. Hang on a minute. That might do me, actually, one of those. Oh, is it, is it, um, not very good picture on that, actually. Oh, it prevents heat loss. You might get too hot, though, mind you. I'm, I might actually, actually, do you know what? I'm going to take a note of that. Well done, Kath in Wales. We might get that winter cycling jacket. Because you know I go on my bike a lot, cycling jacket. And the, the, the actual jacket I've got is a really old skiing jacket, which is actually very, very tatty now. But um, it's very, very warm. I've had it for years. Now, what else have they got? And these are the these are the Thursday special buys. Hang on a minute. Perfect for autumn and winter colour. Cyclamen, two ninety nine a pack. Oh yeah, I need. To, hang on, let my, you're you're right. You know, sit. How do you spell it? Sit. C y clemen. Because I've got to do my winter hanging baskets now. Usually I do winter pansies, but two ninety nine a pack. I mean that is a bargain. What else have they got? Premium bulb collection. I don't put bulbs in anymore because you have to get... They, they keep um, coming up blind because I don't split them up. I can never remember where I've put them. <laughs> Are we only gardeners? I do see my garden. It's not one of those gardens that's um, all done, you know, neatly and perfectly. I kind of randomly put things in and they all come up. And the trouble is, I can never remember where the bulbs are. Because you are supposed to split them up, aren't you, after a while. And I can't remember where they are until they come up. And by the time they come up, it's too late again. Of course, you know, if you were intelligent enough, you'd draw a map, wouldn't you? But I forget to do that as well. So, there we are. Mountain bike shorts. What are all these? Look very sexy. I could quite fancy myself in a pair of those. Separate skip. Well, oh, they're getting a lot of bike things in there, aren't they? They've got mountain bike... Oh, winter cycling gloves. We'll have some of those. Cycling gloves. But they've got... Have they got no fingers? Oh, yeah. Cycling shoes. What are these? Cycling socks. Heart rate monitor. Well, that won't work on me because I don't have one. We don't... We don't waste time having hearts. We really don't. They've got loads of bike... Oh, a pannier set. I've got panniers. Bike stand. It's all here, isn't it? Well, I'm glad I'm um, mini double action pump. Now, I wonder what that is. Oh, that's for bike as well, is it? Oh, I thought it was one of those awful things that you buy from certain websites that. Dear me, we won't have any of that. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for that. Few bargains will be purchased there this afternoon. Back to the uh, email. Um, if you can look them up on the Internet. Yes, well, we have done the African worm eye. Now, we were talking about that just over a week ago. It's this insect, right? It, but it, it, it in a well, what country was it? in Africa, Africa, um, in Africa. And it bites you and it lays eggs in you. And these eggs uh, go into your blood and little worms start growing seriously. And they do you know where they end up coming out? Don't you? No, not that end. Out of your eye. Adult worms start coming out of your eye. How disgusting is that? We were talking about that the other week. And um, Kaf says, the African worm eye sounded dreadful on Thursday. That's all for now. Lots of love from Kath, who sends this rather wintry picture. She says, the photo on the front is taken not that far from where I live. And no, I didn't take it. Lots of love from Kath. Thank you, Kath. Yes. Very, very scary, that African eye worm. Right, now, if you want to send a pen, uh, a, a letter into the studio, then you can do so, boys and girls, all right? My full postal address is United Kingdom Talk, P.O. Box 4073, Bracknell, 
B-R-A-C-K-N-E-L-L. RG42 9ED United Kingdom. Once again, United Kingdom Talk, P.O. Box 4073, Bracknell, B R A C K N E L L, R G 429 E D. All right? I know sometimes you might be sitting there, you know, one, four. Could write a letter today. Well, write a letter to me and I shall read it out. Uh, Wayne says, at the end of the day, Chris, on the subject of uh, the church and all that, the church is a holy place to meet with God. It's very sad that people are, are like this about others. Also, there are things wrong that do need addressing and people do have a right to be angry about some of the issues. They are just venting their anger in the wrong way. I'll go along with that. I'll go along with that. And uh, he also says, Southern Hemisphere here is opposite seasons, Chris. So January is their summer. Well, I do know about seasons. Thank you very much. I know all about seasons. I mean, for example, you put pepper and other seasons on, on food that you like, don't you, Wayne? Thank you very much. Yes. <coughs> OK. Uh, email here from... Let's do these. Uh, I like to do the emails in date order as they come in. Uh, young Ian Duff. Hello, Ian. Now, Ian is constantly writing in to me, concerned when podcasts do not appear. Aren't you, Ian? If that podcast, not that you get a quick email from, an angry email from Ian saying, where is Mike Cullen's show? What, he overslept? That's why there was no show for... I know, shocking, isn't it? I mean, if you've got a show at what I mean, you can almost understand me perhaps oversleeping. Now, for example, last night I got to bed 4.30 in the morning. OK, and I'm up again at 9.30 to sit here because that's just me. I like to be here on time. Other people, other people can't get out of bed in the morning. And it's shocking. Mike Cullen could not get out of bed. Actually, wait, let, let's, let's, just, let's just have a see if we can. I don't know if he's around, is he? No, he's not around. Mike Cullen could not get out of bed in the morning. It's shocking and horrifying, if you ask me. Eh? <laughs> Ian writes, Dear Chris, I enjoyed your show on Tuesday. I was cleaning out my fireplace and lighting the gas pilot. Oh, surely not. I do hope you haven't put that heating on yet. It's not December yet. Heating must not... We have this problem every year with people. You're putting on your heating too early. Far too early. That's why you're cold all the time. My best friend Ronnie, he's got, he's always cold. Where he's always got a coat. Oh, I'm freezing cold. You go around his house, it's like a blooming sauna. Obviously, without the people walking around with little white towels hanging around their waists. You know. It is like a sauna in his house. Awful. Awful. And that you must not put your heating on yet. Wear a jumper. Put a jumper. It's not necessary to put the heating on yet until we get into minus figures. And then you may consider it. Ian says, I was cleaning out the fireplace and lighting the gas pilot. It was made the job much easier. Oh, what? Listening to the show, you mean? Oh, thank you very much. Yes. We are moving directly into the fall on this side of the world. That is winter, incident. Not, not winter. Autumn. The Americans call it the fall. Why do they call it? I don't know. I don't know why they call it the fall. They like to be different. It will not be long before the fire has to go on to keep the upstairs warm. I'm like you. I don't like running the big furnace too much. And that's from Ian. No, me neither. Don't put that heating on unless you absolutely have to. Um, let's see. Ian also writes, you are really going full circle when you go back to Norfolk Island in the South Pacific. As you probably know, the worst convicts from England were sent to Norfolk Island. Yes, this is true. People you could steal a loaf of bread and be sent out to Norfolk Island and save yourself a lot of money. And Ian, you know, the whole joke of it is this island it really is paradise. And if I was a convict years and years ago, 
then I don't think I would have minded being sent there. It's a beautiful place. Beautiful place. Ian also says on the subject of his iPad, because he's got, he's got, oh yes, he's got an iPad, an iPad. Beautiful piece of equipment. I bought a non-glare screen to put on top of the iPad screen. This makes it very good outside and also stops nasty fingerprints from getting on the glass. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, can you get a case for those iPads? A lot of people get cases for little mobile phones, don't they? I must admit, I, ne I, I never, I don't bother, you know, I usually end up with a rather scratched up screen on my um, mobile phones. I've still got a Nokia. I'm waiting for my free upgrade. Uh, I shall be getting an iPhone probably in December. Looking forward to getting an iPhone in December. And it's, it's just after Christmas. Unfortunately, it's just after, you'd think it would be before Christmas. It's just after Christmas. Now, apparently, as it gets nearer the renewal date for your contract, um, the price that you would pay for an iPhone, if I wanted to pay, I could have one tomorrow, right? But at the moment, that would cost me £125, Okay. In October, if I wanted to do it, it would cost me a hundred pounds. In November, seventy-five, and if I wanted to do it in December, you know, a few weeks before the day, it would cost me fifty pounds. But I'm sorry, you know, why spend money when you don't have to? There's too many people out there dishing it out willy-nilly all over. Oh, I want buy, I want buy, I want, buy. and there's these free offers, but they won't wait. People won't wait, will they? Why won't they wait? Madness. Just madness. And a message uh, from Facebook here from username Red Shift Experiment. That's a good username now. We like that. Red Shift Experiment says that uh, we were talking about books on a previous program. Books as in paper books, OK, or books as in e-books, what you would read on an e-reader or an iPad. Something like that. Or perhaps on a computer screen. And uh, this person says, I agree with you about the book thing. I think that looking at the progress you have made by reading, looking at your bookmark, as you say, gives you an idea of how far the book, um, how far you are through the book and either motivates you or tells you how, how fast you may need to read to get through the book so it doesn't take you forever. Um, he says, hmm. Is that really something I've never thought of before? Well, yeah, you know, we, we were saying, um, I, I, I don't, I'm not a great reader. I've got to, I'm reading Tony Blair's book at the moment. I'm thinking I'm up, I'm up to about page 58. I do read very, very slowly. I, I, I don't find I have the time to read. And certainly uh, I read more in summer. Uh, because I go out into the garden on my new steamer chair, which I have, I have now a new steamer chair. Because the old one fell apart, unfortunately, yes. A new steamer chair which arrived, was it last week? I couldn't believe it. You know, I was sitting in the living room and I heard a noise at the door and I went, and there was a card. Sorry, we could, we, you weren't in. I thought, you never knocked the door. And I ran out, I ran out, I ran out the door, dear. Excuse me, did you knock? Yes, mate. Oh, oh, you're in. Yes, I mean, why didn't you knock? I did. I was, well, you didn't. The bell didn't work, didn't go. Oh, well, I've left it with your neighbour. Have a nice heart and walked off. Didn't even ring the bell. Shocking. So I have a new steamer chair, but unfortunately it gets, it's getting colder now, so you can't, there's no sun, certainly no sun to sit outside in today and read my books. Um, this person says, I too am a DJ and I use a laptop. Yeah, same as you. Yes, I use a laptop to DJ as well now. I, too, am always staring at the screen, but I don't surf the net while I'm DJing. I never thought of it. Oh, well, you should do, because it can be a bit boring sometimes, DJing, depending on the night and what have you. You know, we do sometimes get bored, OK? All right, onward. Email here from, oh, just a quick message here from uh, Wayne. Rubbing salt in. We're, all, we're always rubbing salt in wounds. Uh, the email address of the show, by the way, if you want to join in, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. A lot of the, the people, I don't know why, but a lot of the people who used to call in don't seem to call in anymore. I wonder why that is. Did I say something wrong? Have I upset someone? 
still have to say, what have I done wrong? Eh? Is it me? Is it me? Millie in Minnesota, who we just had on the phone a little while ago. She had trouble with her sound today. Right, hi Chris. As I write this, I am at the cottage. She's got, oh, she's got cot places all over the world, this woman. She's got properties all over the place. As I'm writing this, I'm at the cottage until the 19th of September. My parents are away for a few days visiting friends, which means my carer, Lisa, and I have the place to ourselves. It's going to be a party down there, I'm telling you now. My parents will be back at the weekend, so I'll be able to spend some time with them before I head back home. I'm glad you're taking a little break. I'm going to see Sharon and the children. Please give them my love. Yes, going to visit my sister after work on Saturday night for a few days. I've booked into a hotel. Very good price, actually. £79 a night, which is not bad at all, uh, because unfortunately I can't stay at my sister's house now due to all her pets and they create absolute havoc with my breathing. And if it's as it is now... It'll be even worse. And I don't want to... Because what's happened the last two times, I've had to leave a day early. Because it's got so bad. All right, so looking forward to that. <clears throat> Hearing Toby's email, Toby wrote uh, from Japan in the last show, has compelled me to respond. However, I'm not going to respond in the way you might be expecting. I'm going to instead say that not only do I understand fully where he's coming from, but also that I'm no longer proud to say I'm a citizen of the United States of America. In fact, I'm now very ashamed to be an American citizen. This has nothing to do with what Toby said in his email, but other things which I'll explain in a minute. If you're wondering what email she's talking about, um, I think in the last show... Uh, Tuesday's show, we had a, a, quite a long email from Toby. Now, if you missed that, or indeed any of the other shows, you can always watch or listen again. Simply go into the main website for this particular show, which you'll find at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right? unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Look at any of the older shows there. That's where you'll find them, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Millie writes, this feeling of shame is not something that has sprung up out of the clear blue sky. It's been building for a long time now, but it took me a long time to admit it even to myself. But over the last three weeks to a month, recent events have happened here that literally make me feel ill. The first is the anti-Muslim sentiment that has reared its ugly head here lately. Have I forgotten the events of 9-11? Of course not. But I will not stoop so low as to say all Muslims are evil because of that one event. <clears throat> this is the thing, you see. Why is it that a small group of people do something and people assume that everyone who is in somehow connected to a larger sort of version of that group are the same as that small group of people because they're not. One could argue that the very, very small Christian group that were going to do this book burning are just as bad as those Muslims that blew up the towers. Could one not? It's always the real extremists, just a small group of people that are the problem, and it's just not true, it's just not true. She carries on to say, the second event that has turned my stomach is that there was a pastor in the USA who wanted to burn the Koran as a way of remembering 9-11. I mean, you know, what a way to remember it, by burning someone's holy book. 
Even though in the end he decided not to do it, it upset me on two levels. One, it flies in the face of one of the very principles in the USA was founded on, which is freedom of religion. We have the same thing here in the UK. Everyone is free to do as they will. Muslims are not all radicals, nor are all of them evil. The vast majority of them simply want their lives to live their lives and practice their religious faith without fear of retaliation. But what has sickened and continues to sicken me most of all is that the majority of the people I've talked to are completely behind the idea of desecrating the Muslim holy book as a form of retaliation for 9-11. And this is coming from an American lady, Millie, in Minnesota. Most of the people she talks to actually are behind the idea of burning that book, or were. She goes on to say, both of these things are what led me, led to my no longer being proud to be from America. I realise that this email may have upset some, if not all, of the listeners to the show, but this is truly how I feel. And I will not apologise for being honest about my feelings. Enjoy your break with the family, and that's from Millie. Thank you, Millie. <clears throat> I have to say... Here in the UK, the, you know how you, you talk and conversations with people. Most people I spoke to, in fact, 99% of the people I spoke to were horrified that this, this pastor had considered such a thing. And is this right? He's got a congregation of about 40 or something like that. Is that right? 40 people in, in his congregation. You know, I think if a group of people had started burning a Bible, do you know what I'd do? Laugh at them, call them very sad and walk off. Don't need to retaliate. Why do I need to retaliate? That's what I, that's what I, that's where I am. There is, of course, a saying that you can all be tarred with the same brush. And I think there's a bit of what's going on here, really. It's very sad and unfortunate, but that's how people are. <coughs> Watch out for that cough. I'm really sorry, the cough. Bad today. Um, I don't know what else to say on that, really. It's a very personal thing, isn't it, really? You know, how you get on with people. I like to think I get on with everyone. What about you? Perhaps you've got a neighbour who is not of the same mould as you, whether it be religion or colour or anything else, and you get on really well with this person. Let's just say, for example, let's say that you perhaps may be racist and you have next door someone of a different colour other than yourself, but you get on with them really well. So why is it that you hate all the others? Each person is different, isn't they? Aren't they? I find it very difficult to hate people unless they've done something really nasty. Similarly, my religion teaches me that you have to forgive everyone, no matter what they've done. And there are certain people throughout my life, let me tell you, who are the same as me. They are, shall we say, they are white, they are Catholic or Christian. And they've done things that I haven't thought is good. 
and I'm supposed to forgive them. I find that very difficult. In fact, I I can't. I try and I can't. All people are different. All people are different. And I think if everyone was the same, how boring would that be? Hmm? Right. On we go then. Thank you, Millie. <coughs> Hello to Fagash Lil, who says, It ain't the cough that carries you off, Chris. It's the coffin they carry you off in. I might not want to go in a coffin. Well, I've decided I will probably die here in the house, quietly, and it just won't be noticed. And by the time they break into the house and come into the house, my body will have degenerated into dust and be eaten by my friends, the spiders that I reside with in this house. Hey, thank you, Fag Ashley. Um... <laughs> Okay, hello to... Let's say, oh, we're doing on time. We've got quite a long email here from Jennifer, which I think I might leave until... Uh, yep, I'll leave that until Saturday's show. One, one email from Jennifer there. Uh, that we'll leave till after. Uh, till, till Saturday's show, rather. Uh, bad news yesterday, but... Oh, is anyone into astronomy that can talk to me about astronomy? I've always been fascinated by the stars. Now, um, I am considering purchasing a telescope, boys and girls, but I have got, if I can just go and get these for a minute, I have got a pair of binoculars. Now, these were my dad's. They're very good binoculars, and it makes you see up close to things, you know? Quite an old pair. These are possibly... <clears throat> I don't know where he, these might have been his when he was in the army. They're very, very, not like the binoculars, but these are all made of metal. These are as solid as a rock. Do you remember that record from Ashford and Simpson? Solid. Solid as a rock. Da, I said rock. Da, 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 da. You know that song? Yeah. So I might, I sort of tried to look at the stars with these before, but you don't get that close. Is anyone into astronomy? Because I'm sort of wondering if I should buy a telescope and then peer out into the night sky. Although I am surrounded by trees. I think I'd have to go somewhere and, and, and see these stars. Of course, the perfect place to see these stars would be Norfolk Island. Because there's no street lamps on the island. Oh, you, believe me, it's beautiful. At night there, it's just stunning. You look, you lay on the grass, right, and just look up to the sky to the stars it's funny isn't it how how it how life is always better on the other side isn't it you know there's plenty of young people um on the island who are as bored as anything because there's nothing for them to do really at night time they just go round and round the uh, the island at warp speed on in their cars and there's nothing for them to do and here i am can't wait to get there for a bit of peace and quiet eh? So does anyone do astronomy? Could you recommend perhaps a, a little telescope? What, what's it like? I mean, I don't know what to do. There's all these different telescopes. Yeah, I don't want to go into, you know, you could go into Argos and buy a telescope. And I don't want some child thing that's going to be useless after a couple of tries. On the other hand, I don't want to, you know, get seriously into this. I mean, got enough, I do enough things as it is now. Don't want to get seriously into it and spend hundreds of pounds on something that may only be used once or twice. But I do quite like the idea of looking out into the sky. With a telescope, can you see things that you cannot see with your eyes out there? I mean, if, if, you, could, if you could find, for example... Venus or Mars up in the sky, right? Could you see it as a planet rather than a little bright speck sparkling in the night? A little bit like me. I try and sparkle in the night, do you? Anyone know anything about astronomy? What should I buy to get me started? But I don't want to buy something that will be useless very quickly because it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not what I'm looking for. I want to be able to see things in the sky that I can't see now. 
Bearing in mind, I'm a bit, little bit older now, and even now when I look into the sky, I can't. I know I can't see everything as clearly as I used to be. You know, not everything's so sharp now. Sometimes some of these stars are a bit blurred. Anyone know what I should buy? Wayne says, I do like stars as well. I like stars. Bruce Forsyth, Scylla Black, Shirley Bassey's. The stars are wonderful. But we are talking about the stars and the... Star oh, yes, I like stars. Not celebrities. I'm not keen on celebrities. I like stars. People with talent who entertain me. Not people who appear on such rubbish things like Big Brother. What telescope should I buy? Can anyone advise me? Anyone who's watching a recording of this show, please let me know, because I need help on this one. Uh, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Had a nice day out on Tuesday at uh, my best mate Ron's house. And I've had a haircut. Yes. At my favourite Turkish hairdressers. They seem very good at cutting hair, those Turkish chaps, don't they? Eh? Very good indeed. Number one back and sides. Number two on the top. Looking butch once again. Had my hair cut specially just for you. So I did that. But we were a little bit naughty afterwards. Because we then went to... Um, I've, I've been quite naughty this week. On Tuesday... Was it on Monday? My friend came round to collect all some old CDs that he's selling on eBay. <coughs> and we went to Pizza Hut afterwards. And we had the buffet. All you can eat buffet for six forty nine. So I had various, several slices of pizza. I'm afraid to say. And then again on Tuesday, while I was mate, around my mate Ron's house, I spotted a bar of chocolate in his fridge. Not only that, chocolate biscuits. There were crisps, and it all, it all went sadly wrong. So I do hope I haven't put too much weight on. Um, and yes, the bad news of the week yesterday. Now at Belushi's in Barra, I often park. On double red lines. It's just how it is around there. It's very, very difficult to park. There's like a box in front of the pub, which you can fit about three, I think, um, three, just three cars in this in this little boxed area, right? And it's, it's just impossible. Just impossible. And last night, boys and girls, I'm afraid to say I got a parking ticket. Yes, £60. Six of, where is the parking ticket? I've got it here somewhere. One minute. I mean, I've got a mound, an absolute mound. Oh, no, I haven't got it here. I don't know where it is now. I've got an absolute mound of paper here in front of me. God's sake. Unbelievable. So there we are, parking ticket. I think I've told you everything I was going to tell you now. Yep, that's it today, I think. Let me see. That's it today. Just a couple of things for you to watch out on the uh, television here in the UK. Uh, every day, half past five, we are still watching Coach Party, or Coach Trip, rather, with the lovely Brendan presenting that. Do you watch that? Coach Trip. And on one of the other shows uh, was a very, very interesting thing on miniature railways. They went to visit a miniature railway in Hamburg in Germany. Now, I haven't been to Germany yet, and I must, I must go at some point. The trouble is they don't speak English, do they, dear? And I can't do German. I can do a bit of French. I can get away with French. But I'm afraid I can't do German. That's just the way it is. Anyway, boys and girls, time for me to go. Thank you very, very much for joining me today on the show. Uh, my name's Chris Reardon. My email address, once again, is Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk see you on the next show from myself Chris Reardon thanks for watching and listening bye bye now